I keep my commentary family friendly, so you don't have to worry. But this game is rated M by the ESRB. What is up, all you third gamers out there? Welcome back to some more Fallout 4. Now, last time, we cleaned up those warehouses. That's right, Whitechapel Charlie was most pleased and handed us over large sums of money, which Maximus Kane thoroughly enjoys. Then we came on over to Hubris Comics with our good pal, McCready, who likes it when we pick locks and steal things. And we're doing that a lot. At least we were when we were in the warehouses. Today we're just picking locks, probably. But we're in Hubris Comics because we have begun the Silver Shroud quest line. We picked it up a couple episodes ago. And uh, now we're going around to uh, get this really ball rolling on this <laughs> ball. It's a deflated kickball that I can't seem to pick up. That's weird. Um, we did discover that I've probably been here before, mainly because I have the key to this place. Um, and Grognak's axe, which is supposed to be in that uh, display case over there, is not in that display case. So I, I, I have no idea. Maybe I came in here to get it and just left. I'm not sure. I don't remember. It's been so long ago. Um, but we're moving through Hubris Comics now. We're uh, headed up. It looks like we've got to get upstairs, probably the top floor, I would wager, to get uh, the Silver Shroud costume. And this place is filled with ghouls. Filled with them. Well, I got that one because of all my perks. I do some excellent sneak attack damage. Oh, look at you. Let's kill you. Boop. And then your friend falls out of his little hidey hole. And I shoot him too, and somehow I hit the wall. Whoa, buddy, back up now. All right, that was terrifying. And he had a plastic fork on him. Stay alert, McCready. We have ghouly, ghouly, ghoulies everywhere. Ghouly, 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 ghouly everywhere. Okay, we got some stuff there, a desk fan and a typewriter. I am an antique, technically, McCready. Interesting. I must have come through here, because I'm pretty confident there are supposed to be scavenger bodies in those spots with the with the blood pools, and there's not. There's no scavenger bodies there for us to see and loot stuff from, which is a little strange. Um, also, some of you might notice that uh, there was an interesting quest on our quest list. Hey, keys. Um, and I'll go ahead and address it while we're while we're sitting in here and we've cleared this out. Unfinished deal. Find the RU five five six. That is a mod. It is a mod I have downloaded and tested out on another character um, that adds a weapon into the game that I have found I really enjoy using. Um, it starts off with this tiny little, and it is a very quick quest. You go out to this one particular spot, and, uh, and you find it, and, and that's it. Um, then the quest is done. Um, so it's it's a way to get a little bit of basically free experience in my book, and you get an excellent weapon that uses the 5.56 ammo ammo type, um, and it like I said it's a fantastic weapon. I've tested it out, and I can't wait to add it into the game to show you guys. Um, it also seems to be very stable because um, I I don't know if some of you might remember uh, in times past I had downloaded weapon mods. And um, it caused the game to crash. So, uh, but this one thing, where did, McCready, where are you coming from? How did you get over there? Uh, anyway, manager's terminal, we'll read that in a second. C uh, McCready, get off of me, McCready. Oh, hi there, friend. Um, your leg is forfeit, and so is yours. Do. 
Oh no, my knee! You shot my knee, then you shot my leg off. Where'd your buddy go? I'm very confused. No. Where did he go? Your buddy's just, just, he just sort of left you here, bro. See if I can get my crit up. Ooh, right in your face. Oh, you're dead now. No. He's, he's not really serious. He's right there. Come on, McCready. Why can't you kill a level 15? This guy had a powerful boxing glove. That seems like fun, McCready. I should give it to you so you can punch them. I can make you equip it. So then you don't have a choice but to use it. Instead of using some really weak automatic Tommy gun. But pay attention, McCready. We've got one on our level with us. Somewhere over the rainbow. Oh. Hi there, friend. How are you doing? Let me kill you. Boom. Um, actually, no, McCready. I did that. Thank you very much. Did another one show up in that spot? I don't see him. I don't see anybody there. Hello? Hello? Would you... Oh, I don't have any grenades. Never mind. Ignore me and my grenades. What does the manager's terminal have to say? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, October 11th, 77. From Tina Hopkins to Vivian O'Dell, now an English butler. I came into work today and found another stealth revision to the shooting script. Now the Shroud has an English butler? I keep telling Babowski that we need our core fans to be our evangelists, so we can't keep making these stupid little changes. You have to talk to him before you go on vacation, otherwise I swear I'm bringing it up to Pete. And then this was four days later. Still from Tina Hopkins, please help. I want to pull my hair out. Babowski has cast and signed a contract with Claire Redel for the role of the Mistress of Mystery. I don't care how much the tomb of Amun-Ra grossed. The Mistress of Mystery is a brunette, not a blonde. Brown, and definitely not a redhead. And have you heard Claire's voice? The Mistress of Mystery is confident. A match for the Shroud at his best day. Not some half-starved waif that's known for her shrill screaming. Shannon Rivers has worked for us for decades. She is the voice of the Mistress of Mystery. End of story. She's even a natural brunette. She's not as young as Claire, but surely we can do something with lighting to help with that? If we don't fix this, I swear I'm walking. I won't have my name in the credits for this train wreck. And then the next day. From Aaron Babowski to Vivian O'Dell on the Mistress of Mystery casting. Vivi, relax. If it's that important to you, maybe we can put Claire in a wig, but the contract is signed. So this is happening. What is it with you guys and Miss Rivers anyway? Maybe 20 years ago, but now she's got a face made for radio. <laughs> Am I right? Claire's got star power, and that's what we need. I talked with Petey Boy, and he's agreed to a couple new scenes. We need romance, and Claire's got the goods. If Tina can't roll with this, then I can fly in one of my boys from Hollywood. He's a class act. I got a full schedule today, dress rehearsals until 8. This can't wait until you're back from the Bahamas. So if we have to meet, eight's my only window. Well, sounds like there was some stuff going on with the uh, Silver Shroud. I believe they were trying to make a movie. Or like a TV show or something. Or a made-for-TV movie or something. To that effect, I'm not sure. To be honest, I, it's been... Forever and three days. Whoa, whoa, where did you even come from? That's a no, sir. No. Why? How can't you? I mean, there's some kind of weird, creepy skylight coming in. We came in here when it was daytime, and all of a sudden it's... it Or nighttime, and all of a sudden it's daytime. This door open? Hello? Ghouly ghouly ghouls. Where are you ghouly ghouly ghouls? Did we check everything down here that there was to see? 
Hmm. Check that room. Don't know if I looked in here. Obviously I did not, because I didn't get all these bottle caps, because they are muy importante. Oh, no, this is the, uh, little place with the, with the, uh, legendary, that's the manager's terminal, that stairs upward. This is a hole in the ground. So we're gonna go, okay, they were suddenly on the same level as we were, that was a little weird. Plastic fork man came up that way. All right, stay with me, McCready. We came through here. And we got some stairs we can go up, so I'm gonna go up. Okay. Do ba do ba do ba do ba do ba do. Hello. Hey, friend. Where are you going? Let's just shoot. Maybe he'll die. Oh, good, he died. Who's next? Hello. I see you, little red dots. Come on, red red dots. Come out and play. Don't want a dinner fork, but I will take your bobby pins and ammo. I'm still in danger, yet the music has stopped. Which is a little weird. That jingles the moon monkey is slightly creepy. Okay, I'm gonna close that so we don't fall to our deaths. We should, should get the heck out of here? Uh, well, yeah, you know, McCready, I would normally... Agree with you? Oh, you're dead. But, um... But you see, there's stuff in here we need for a quest. So you're just gonna have to be patient. And uh, let me shoot stuff. And kill things, okay? Okay, there's lots of red dots up there. This unlocks, and a rad roach. Doop! Boom! Rad roach is dead. Another rad roach? Anybody? Rad Roach City? Gotta live in the Rad Roach City. Mintats and stim packs, bloat fly meat, bottle caps and wonder glue. Ah, the script. I'll take the script. Is it something we read? Well, it it would be, but uh good night with the with the flashlight. You you can't read anything. Okay. Uh, let's see, it should be right there. Death Becomes You, Draft 18. Fade in, title card, Adventures of the Silver Shroud. Cue instrumental theme song, episode card, Death Becomes You, narrator. Today's episode, Death Becomes You, in title sequence. Title card, Boston 2077. Exit Boston Street at night. Newly shot footage of the Boston skyline at night. The full moon lights up the sky. The mass fusion building and Trinity Tower are clearly visible. Pan down to the street level. The hustle and bustle of Boston at night. Cars, people, etc. Enter the rusty anchor pub. Back room. A ceiling fan spins over a small card table. Three men and two women. All gangsters sit quietly contemplating their cards. A pile of chips sits in the middle of the table. This is clearly a high-stakes backroom card game. Bald beauty, you're bluffing. Crazy Clara, glad you think so. Bald, oh, bald Betty, I said beauty. <laughs> bald Betty, okay, fine, I'm all in. Bald Betty pushes all of his chips onto the middle of the table, making the pile even larger. Silver Shroud. Actually, you all fold. Everyone at the table looks around in panic. Nobody knows where the voice came from, but they recognize the voice as being from the Silver Shroud. Bald Betty. No, it can't be. Silver Shroud. Oh, but it can. The lights go out suddenly. The room is illuminated only by the fire from the barrel of a machine gun. It's the Silver Shroud. He appeared as if by nowhere, and has sprayed the room with bullets. In the flashes, the different gangsters can be seen falling over, almost as if it's stop motion. The lights come back on. All of the gangsters lie dead. The Silver Shroud stand next to the table, machine gun smoking. He looks directly at the camera and speaks. Feeny Five, death has come for you, and I am its shroud. This holotape and its contents are the property of Huber's comrades, all rights reserved. 
That was fantastic. I need that printed out. <laughs> All right, we've got some stuff in there. Don't care about the mine. Uh, and then we had another terminal, producer's terminal. We're getting a lot of lore this episode, intermixed with some uh, random death sequences of ghouls. Okay, this was the 14th of October. From Evans to Erin Babowski. I tried stalling her, uh, but things are spiraling over here. Her agent was having dinner with Maxwell over at the Derby. Not good. Claire's still on board. She loves the script. She especially loves the outfit. You got the shots of that, right? Yowza! So I don't care what's going on over there. We need to sign her before we lose her to the Wisemans or someone else. We looked into the Hopkins contract. It's ironclad. The only way she's out is if she walks. Her partner signed over his rights to hubris, but she still has hers. If she even thinks of going to a lawyer, you gotta work your magic, babo. Imagine if we need her approval. This was 15, from Vivian to Erin, Mistress of Mystery. It has come to my attention you've hired Claire Redell for the role of Mistress of Mystery for the show. This is absolutely unacceptable. The Mistress of Mystery has an iconic look. She must be a brunette. The Mistress of Mystery is a strong female protagonist, not some damsel in distress. Shannon Rivers has voiced M.O.M. for years, and is beloved in The Shroud and every other radio drama she's been a part of. I know we've had our differences, but this affects more than the Silver Shroud. The M.O.M. and the Unstoppables are big brands. We absolutely talk before I go on my vacation. And then this was 18, from Peter to Aaron, MOM casting. Vivi got a hold of me before she left. I got the photos of Claire, and she's dynamite. Love the alteration to the costume. It still feels like the comic, but more believable. So I'll back you there. But I'm with Vivi. MOM's a brunette, period. And her voice needs to be strong. Claire's voice isn't. Can we have Shannon dub over Claire and post? That's the word, right? That would be the best of both worlds. And then this was 20, from Tina Hopkins to Aaron. I quit. Effective immediately, I quit. You can explain to Petey how you lost the lead writer for the Silver Shroud and after everything Shannon has put up with, if you want to fire her, do it yourself. Manticore's been wanting to hire me for years. Looks like your loss is their gain. Well, some drama... No, get out, come on. Some drama in the film industry. Even with, you know, the threat of nuclear war going on outside... Things are still filled with drama. Okay, what well we got? Do, 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 do. Okay. Two for you. Two for you. And that's all I see. Two. Oh, don't even need two. One. One. Done. We got a glowing one. Hmm. I can only see his arms. So I'm going to crit it. I killed him. Before he even got out of the room. Hi, friend. Let's shoot your head, shall we? Wow. I don't even know how that was physically possible, but it happened. Your head, it exploded right off. The top of it, no less. And you had a gold-plated flip lighter. Oh, did not mean to take that. So this is where they used to feel... Yeah, it is. This is where they did it, McCready. Isn't it exciting? We came in here for all the bottle caps and light bulbs. Nothing in that drawer. Ooh, yes. Bottle caps and ammo. Bottle caps and ammo. More bottle caps. I like this. That perk is fantastic. Studio control terminal. Let's take a look-see, shall we? Audio controls. Alert, audio equipment is currently offline. Please contact the technician for assistance. Static test pattern, silver shroud theme. Oh, that's fantastic. Playing over the the speakers. I don't know if you guys can really hear it. It's pretty fantastic. Let's turn it off. Alright. Cool, that was pretty fancy. I think we can just walk around now. Um, so we're pocket watch some handcuffs. Hey, hey, costume. Got it. Got the costume. Hey, hey, nice. got the submachine gun. You're dead. Boop, boop, a chew. Boop, boop, a chew. Okay, Braxo cleaner. Could sit in this chair. 
There's nothing else back here. At least it doesn't look like it. I don't see anything else. Cool, cool, cool. Take a look around. I don't want to miss anything. We got pocket watches. They were smoking some cigarettes. Indoors. That's not wise, people. Don't do that. Don't smoke. PSA from Third Gamer Plays. Got that. We got black vest and slacks. Pompadour wig. A heated super sledge. Buff out. Bottle cap. Don't need any of that stuff. Coffee cup. Bottle cap and a silver locket. Can sell that maybe someday. Oh, look, we come back here. Do, 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 do. And steamer truck with stuff. Rataway right and extinguisher. Laser rifle, combat armor. Don't care. Open the door. Come on in here. What do we got? A suitcase with nothing in it. A Rataway, right alarm clock. And that's it. All right. Well, I will call this place Finito, is the end. Let us cut back over to Mr. Conway real fast with his stuff. Pretty sure I have all the stuff in here. I'll do a quick check uh, before we disappear back. Okay, so as I was looking around, I found a terminal that I missed. Um, and we're going to read that real quick. We've got, uh, this is the writer's terminal, Tina Hopkins, and we've got an entry from the 11th of October, 2077, and 15th and 20th. So start here, from Vivian to Tina, now an English butler. I'll talk with Mr. Babowski, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. Pete brought him in because he gets television. We have to accept that there's going to be changes to get to the small screen, and I agree our fans are important, but the Silver Shroud's numbers outside of Boston are, well, not ideal. A lot is riding on the success of the pilot. If Mr. Babowski thinks an English butler could help the show, please hear him out. I love the work you and Vince have done with the Shroud. We wouldn't be shooting this show without you. I know it's tough, but hang in there. Then the 15th. Please help. Shannon and his family. I promise you I will fight for this. This needs to be resolved before Sunday. I'm not canceling my honeymoon again over this. Make sure Babowski doesn't sneak out before I grab him. Then the 20th, uh, need lines. Tina, baby, we needed those lines yesterday. I don't know how you do things on radio, but we got catering follies. Best men and actress sitting around on their tushes because your most recent delay. We're not writing Shakespeare here. It's TV, right? I know you don't like the new monkey, but... Focus loves him. He's testing better than Claire in that silly wig. Speaking of which, Claire's agent is really not loving the wig. Really, really not loving it. Claire's flying in Monday, and by then I think it's best if we nix the wig. Am I right? Or what? And Shannon's being a real peach standing in for her while Claire wraps up her film, but it may be best if she's not around when Claire flies in. Will you take care of that? Thanks. Yep, so just more, more drama. More, more drama. Alright, so where were we? We were going to do things? We, oh yeah, just, just right now, off to Kent. Alright, here we are, back in the memory den. Where Kent is, uh, back here in this room. So let's come give him a chit-chat. Hey there, friend. We're back, man. Did you miss us? I got your costume, Kent. I got your costume, Other Kent. Like. And some stuff you might like. Yeah, pretty as the posters. Silver Shroud costume herself. Memorabilia too, you know it. Mm-hmm. With gun, yep, everything's all set. Hand over the costume. Boom boom ba -joom, gave me some money. You took some stuff, you got the script, you got the gun prop, gave me some more money. You could be Rhett Reinhardt, but I could be I could be Shroud. I could be the Shroud, you know? Mm-hmm. Like me. Yeah, don't sell yourself too short, you know? Me? I should wear it. Aw, oh, McCready disliked that? What? Why would you dislike that, McCready? And see, this is where it gets kind of funny, because McCready likes it when you ask for a reward. I was going to be nice, but I have McCready and he's a bad influence. I could use a little extra, yeah, give me some money. McCready liked that? McCready liked that? Does he like that? 
McCready? Does he like that? Did he like that? I, I, I extorted this poor guy. Okay, fine. The Shroud. Boom, boom, pachoom. Awesome, awesome. Paused immediately. Do, 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 do. The armor's not the best, but that's okay. All right. The Silver Shroud has returned. To fight crime! Yes! That is what we are going to... Oh, I didn't mean to get my gun out. That is what we are going to do. I'm pushing buttons and having problems now. I meant to turn that off because I was going to walk over here, doop boop a choo and turn around and look at McCready and say, you better like the stuff we do next time. So thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time when we clean up the streets of Good Neighbor as the Silver Shroud. And I will see all of you then. Wow, cool.